Welcome to Know Your Mobile. I'm Basil. This is a Google Nexus 10 and you're watching a video review. We're going to kick things off with design and the design of the Nexus 10 impressed us no end. We're not usually a fan of plastic tablets, especially Samsung plastic tablets. Um, we do like their functionality. However, the Google Nexus 10 impressed us in terms of design as well. The curvature fits really, really nicely in the hand. The soft corners are really, really forgiving on the palm. The rounded ergonomic backing mean, and the soft-ish soft, soft -ish touch, the plastic finish means you've really got a nice grippy tablet on our hands. It's really usable to hold one-handed swiping with the right hand. Not too heavy, really comfortable experience, so I impressed us overall in terms of design. Another key design element we really liked was the front-facing stereo speakers. When the device is down, for example, sound plays up. When the device is in your hand, sound plays forward. It just makes sense. Moving on to the screen, and it is mind-blowing how they managed to get a 2560 by 1600 pixel, um, that many pixels onto this 300 ppi device. It looks phenomenal. Um, it being an LCD, it packs very, very crisp, pure whites. Same technology as an iPad, but um, a few slight differences. It is sharper. When you put them side by side, look really, really close. When you see curves and random other text elements, for example, flourishes, you do see more detail on the Google Nexus 10. However, it isn't quite as punchy, it isn't quite as vibrant. Um, though in isolation, you wouldn't be able to notice this. As far as the user interface goes, Android 4.2 Jelly Bean packs a whole host of incredible changes. We're really, really impressed. This isn't such a huge difference on the Nexus 7 and the Nexus 4. Over on a 10 inch tablet form factor, when we're used to seeing in the right hand corner uh, honeycomb esque notifications bar, it's phenomenal to see the notifications bar unified with the look and feel of the phone. On the left hand side you've got quick settings, on the right hand side you have, uh, sorry on the left hand side you've got notifications, on the right hand side you've got quick settings. Android 4.0 also enables multiple users to use the device, so if I tap my profile picture it'll actually log me out. Um, we've also got widgets on the home screens which don't warrant too much talking about but they're just pretty cool. Um, but as you can see I can log in or log into my colleague John's profile. If I do tap in and log into John's profile you can see he's got a completely different user interface to me, completely different set of apps. So that's fantastic for personalization, making this tablet very feasible for a small business um, or in a household. Um, as you can see, I've also got this password protected, so you can do that across users. I'm just going to log in off camera and jump back on in frame, and no time at all, I'm logged into my account. Moving on to the multimedia functionality of the tab, you've got a 2 megapixel front facing uh, camera, a 5 megapixel rear facing camera with flash, and you've also got a micro HDMI port on the right hand side. The micro HDMI port makes for a huge amount of functionality. Just plug it into a TV with a 10 15 pound cable, and you are good to go. Watching movies, YouTube, web pages, sharing photos, really impressive stuff. As far as the camera goes, performance is pretty decent as well. We can jump into the gallery. And right now we're in a photosphere we're taking, but that's jumping ahead. We're going to talk about the actual picture quality. Uh, macro is probably the strongest point of the camera. As you can see from this picture, you've got a decent amount of detail, decent amount of depth of field. Um, as far as low light performance goes, not all that impressive. An f2.7 lens on board. Uh, there's a slight motion blur as well when you're taking pictures and it isn't uh, the best lighting. Um, again, probably down to the lens, but not going to compete with the iPad or the Asus Transformer Pad Infinity. However, in isolation again, really decent camera, does the job, 10 inch tablet, you're probably not going to be holding it, taking pictures out and about, unless you're opening Photosphere. Now Photosphere is Google's uh, street view type technology um, that enables 360 degree panorama of anywhere that you want. You just take a few photos, it stitches them together for you, as you can see, not 100% perfectly, but perfectly respectably nonetheless. Once it's stitched them together, and down the line you will be able to upload this to Google Maps, which is slightly worrying but slightly cool at the same time. So the camera, pretty good. Video camera, by the way, we're not going to jump into a video, not the best out there. Um, we found a slightly patchy frame rate, hopefully it'll get smoother, a couple of fixes will come down the line. However, really nice to use uh, in terms of the interface because that's been updated and that's something we will come on to. Um, so if we just pop into the camera very nice and quickly, we can see it's still touch to focus, but what it also is is touch to adjust settings rather than have all your settings in the right hand corner. And you've got obviously photosphere, panorama, video, full HD video by the way, and five megapixel image shots. 
Now moving on to performance and the Asus Nexus 10 impressed. It being a dual core processor, a lot of people think, well, why is this better than a quad core processor? Well, it isn't necessarily better per se, but it is really because um, it's quite power efficient being dual core, despite the insane screen resolution. Uh, and at the same time, um, it's also an ex-gen dual core processor. Um, so the technology behind it, the architecture is just absolutely mind blowing. As far as benchmarks go, CES didn't always show this off particularly well. And Tutu, for example, scored it below all the quad core devices out there. However, Quadrant scored it above everything else. GL benchmark scored it really, really high. And Velamo, the web browsing um, benchmark, scored it very, very well. HTML5 tests completely off the chart compared to other Android devices, which is great to see. Um, our experience, really smooth. Like the whole user interface, games were phenomenal. 3D games just looked great. Occasionally there are menus that aren't formatted for the insane resolution, but that's going to get changed down the line. This being a Nexus device, we can expect the maximum amount of software compatibility with it down the line. Um, but yeah, as far as slow, slowdown went, occasionally there was ever so slight slowdown in image intensive websites. This being the BBC site. Um, let's try and access the desktop site. Depending on our internet. Oh, no, we're doing fine. As you can see, well, slight slowdown, ever so slight stagger. This is a really, really intensive site, mind you. Um, however, pinch to zoom works a treat. Tapping through on articles, videos, everything, just really, really nice, speedy. Zoom works well on non-mobile optimized sites, unlike this one. So yeah, very, very impressive overall. And uh, performance-wise, we don't think you have anything to worry about. The tablet comes with eight gigabytes, sorry, 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of storage on it. With a 32 gigabyte version coming in at 10 pounds less than the iPad, uh, with 16 gigabyte version, we think it's a really competitive tablet out there. Definitely get the 32 gigabyte version because it is not expandable. And with games up to one gigabyte, two gigabytes, movies, one, two gigabytes, you're gonna fill this baby up in no time flat. Battery life's the final thing we're gonna talk about and it isn't the best out there. It's about eight and a half hours in contrast to the iPad's 10 hours plus and the Asus Transformer Pad Infinity's 15 hours or so with a keyboard dock. That said, it's perfectly usable. Eight hours is still a lot of time with a tablet device. It also charges via micro USB um, so it's really convenient to charge. Charge is a little bit slowly, but it definitely is a great thing not seeing a proprietary charger on there. So that's been our um, review of the Google Nexus 10. We love this tablet. It's got a whole host of really unique um, selling points. The main one, in our opinion, being the ability to add multiple users seamlessly. It's the first device from uh, any manufacturer other than Windows to do this, Microsoft, um, in terms of operating system. And it's just phenomenal. Um, user interface, slick. Performance, slick. Design, slick. Battery life, not the best. Camera, not the best, but we're perfectly happy to overlook these. So if you want a well-priced tablet, you can definitely opt for the Google Nexus 10 with confidence. Thanks for watching.